We've seen a lot of rainbows lately, and this one is no exception. Seen on the Northern Peninsula by Jennifer Wilson, who sent that picture in to the Honda Town Carboneer Weather Photo Contest. Big question I've gotten is why are we seeing so many rainbows? Well, we'll get into it after I thank tonight's forecast sponsor, Venture Credit Union. Venture Credit Union is currently offering a 4.99% promotional rate on loans for vehicles, power sports, and more. Please see one of their four branches in Glovertown, Twillingate, Gamble, or Catalina for details. Visit VentureCU.ca. When it comes to rainbows, there are a few criteria that need to be met in order for your eye to see it. And we can see them here. Number one, the viewer must be between the sun and the rain. So in the case of this example here, here's the viewer, here's the sun, there's the rain. That is criteria number one. It must be within a few hours of sunrise or sunset, the reason being at that time the sun is low on the horizon, allowing it to shine through the bottom of a rain cloud. The rainbow will appear at the point opposite the sun because the sun is shining through the raindrops and the raindrops make the prism. So we need to see that on the opposite side of where the sun is shining. And larger raindrops often create brighter bands for the rainbow. So the larger the raindrop, the brighter the rainbow will appear. And we've had some large water droplets in the air over the last week or so leading to these beautiful, brilliant rainbows. Now, the opposite holds true. When we start to get small water droplets, we see a less vivid rainbow. In fact, it's almost always white. We call that a fog bow because fog droplets are very small. When you have ice crystals in the atmosphere, we will not get rainbows. Oftentimes then we start to get uh, 22 degree halos and other types of uh, light phenomena that I can't think of off the top of my head right now. For tonight, we're not gonna see any showers, but if we do see a few this evening, we might get a few more rainbows, especially over eastern areas of Newfoundland. Meanwhile, in Labrador, going to be a chilly one in the west. Lows near minus 8 on the island. Overnight temperatures in Buckins, Grand Falls, Windsor, Gander falling near or below the freezing mark in St. John's. We fall to 2 degrees, but some areas may be a tad cooler than that. For the day tomorrow, we start nice and sunny, and the day starts dry. And yesterday, I was saying that Friday looks like a beautiful day. Well, the forecast for Friday has changed a tad by afternoon. I think we're going to be seeing rain uh, over southern areas, and if not by afternoon, certainly by evening. In Labrador, the weather in the east is sunny. In the west, we've got snow arriving during the latter part of the day or the evening. And we'll take a look at Futurecast. We'll jump right ahead now to noon tomorrow afternoon. At that point, there's a snow working its way through Quebec. That moves into Lab West, it looks like, by 5, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. Speaking of that time frame, look at this. Rain showing up on the Buren Peninsula and the south coast by 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. That rain spreads north, and in fact, for some areas tomorrow night of central, interior, western Newfoundland, it may start as rain and wet snow, or maybe even some pockets of freezing rain, which is what you see there in that pink shading. Into Labrador by midnight, not a whole lot going on in Goose Bay, but it's snowing in Lab City, Wabush, and Churchill Falls, and that snow becomes a little more widespread in Labrador by 6 a.m. Saturday. At that point, Saturday morning, we're seeing more in the way of showers over most of Newfoundland, some snow potentially for the higher terrain of the Northern Peninsula. As we go through the day Saturday, we see more snow falling in Labrador, although it begins to exit after 1 or 2 p.m., and on the island, most of the rain is done with by 5 or 6 p.m., but that is essentially round one. We'll get to round two in a second. Snowfall forecast for Labrador between early tomorrow morning and late Saturday evening. A rough five to ten centimeters for areas of Na for areas like Nain, uh, down through Voices Bay, uh, Hopedale maybe a little bit less there. Cartwright looks like only one to two or two to five for you. But as we get back to the Goose Bay area, the Churchill Valley, Churchill Falls, Lab City, Wabush looks like a solid five to 10 or five to 15 centimeters uh, is on the way, piling on top of what's already on the ground. On the island, not looking at much snow through Saturday evening. If we are gonna see it again, it's gonna be tomorrow night. 
highest peaks of the long range mountains could pick up five or 10 centimeters of snow and maybe some of the peaks just to the northwest there of Southbrook in the Green Bay White Bay area and then to the south of the Trans-Canada Highway and some of the higher terrain to the west southwest there of Grand Falls, Windsor, but nothing uh, overly significant. Now we talk about round two. So this is now Saturday evening, 6 p.m. There's the coast of Nova Scotia getting brushed with a bit of rain from this developing area of low pressure. That low is going to track toward the northeast and by midnight Saturday night, Sunday morning, we're looking at rain across southeastern Newfoundland, maybe a little bit of snow in the higher terrain of western Newfoundland. But as with this area of low pressure is moving in, some cold air is going to begin to kind of work in from the north. And that may bring a little bit of snow overnight to parts of central Newfoundland, really to the west of the Bay to Spare Highway, especially inland over higher terrain. So I'll watch that closely. If that does happen, some areas are gonna pick up a couple centimeters of snow, but this is a fast mover, and by midday Sunday, most of the precipitation is east and north of Newfoundland, and the Avalon will see some heavy rain. It looks like early Sunday morning, but that quickly departs, and there will be a little bit of a breeze with this, but uh, the wind gust forecast that I looked at before I recorded this didn't look overly impressive, nothing to kind of write home about wind-wise. Uh, with respect to the snow, we can look at the probability of snowfall amounts. That gives us a good idea of like what the potential is. And so we're looking at here is the potential snowfall of two and a half centimeters or more. So it's the chances of seeing two and a half centimeters or more. And this bar down here in the bottom of your screen gives us those chances. So for roughly areas from like Clarenville back to the west, there is some chance of snow, but it's 40 to 60% of more than two and a half centimeters or an inch. Really high chances on the Northern Peninsula into the Long Range Mountains. But outside of that, this might be a snow producer, but it's not gonna be a big snow producer. And here's why. We change this and now we look at the chances of seeing seven centimeters or more or three inches of snow or more. And you can see we're looking at a 10 to 20 or 30, maybe 40% chance at most in the highest terrain of interior Newfoundland. So this is not going to be a big snow producer, but it will produce snow in some areas, and I'll watch that very closely as we get into the next couple of days, as this is still a developing situation, developing forecast. We look at the weekend forecast, Saturday, Sunday right now, looking pretty quiet, minus the rain and snow coming in Saturday night into Sunday, and also warm in the east, eight, nine degrees for your high Saturday and Sunday. And then into Labrador, we've got the snow Saturday, and then a calmer day, uh, on Sunday, especially on the coast where we're looking at highs of like one or two degrees. Now, something else you may have heard a lot about lately is the polar vortex and how that's gonna be displaced from what's called a sudden stratospheric warming event. Uh, a lot of hype in the weather world going on about this because when that happens, it can displace the polar vortex pretty far south and it can start to do some funky things with the jet stream and subsequently the cold air. And so this will have a direct impact on the polar vortex. And the polar vortex is something that we see every year. It's always there in the winter and it's nothing that's new. When that gets weakened, when the polar vortex gets displaced, we can get some pretty cold air outbreaks, especially into parts of central Canada and the United States. Now, we look at the 10-day trend forecast here for the Avalon, and it's not looking like it's going to get overly cold. But it's after the next 10 days where if we're going to see colder air moving in, that's when it would happen. And again, it's because the polar vortex is going to be disrupted. So typically the polar vortex is like this. It's a swirling pool of air over the northern part of the northern hemisphere. And when you have a very stable polar vortex, you have a strong jet stream that keeps the cold air pretty well locked up over the poles. When that jet stream begins to slow down, and this is essentially what's forecast to happen, the polar vortex can start to wobble the jet stream weakens, that opens a door to cold air coming further south. The question is, when is this going to happen as we get into the latter part of November and December from that warming event I was talking about in the stratosphere, well above our heads. A lot of this info is well above my head as well. But ultimately, when that does happen, it will disrupt the vortex below the stratosphere because the stratosphere is located above the troposphere and that is going to drive that cold air somewhere south, potentially over North America, but could also be over Europe or Asia. So you're gonna see a lot of hype about this. I'm not sold. It's going to directly impact the weather in Canada, 
uh, or North America to the extent that you might see, but it will play a role for sure. As we get closer to figuring that out, as it's still in the long range, we'll talk about those details. If you stuck with me through all this, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Be sure to get the app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And also don't forget the Honda Town Carbonier Weather Photo Contest is on the go through December the 19th. Have a very good Thursday evening. My next update will be tomorrow morning.